Getting your farm off the ground is one of the biggest and most impactful challenges of the game. How well you do can set the pace for your entire first year, so you need to do it right. What I'm not here to do is force you into min-maxing, which if you don't know is basically sacrificing every other part of the game just to make money. Because while that's fun for some people, it's not right for everyone. I'm here to give you options. Diversifying the start of your farm is great for both fun and effectiveness. So first, of course, we gotta talk about the crops. There's plenty of different ways you can take this, but my preferred way is to spend all 500 of that starting gold on parsnips. So I know what your question is. Why not potatoes? They're the best gold per day crop. Well, I've gone over this before, but this will give you more money and more experience than potatoes in two less days with the trade-off of upkeeping a few more crops. This is mostly because on day one, you don't have the luxury of buying as many crops as you want. So more parsnips, less potatoes, it works out. With those parsnips being done in four days, I then spend a clump of money on potatoes as they are the best gold per day crop now. Again, just buy as many as you're comfortable watering every day. And then by the time that spring 13th comes, you'll have already harvested all of the potatoes in time to buy strawberries at the egg festival, which is now your new best gold per day crop. And note that if you started with potatoes on day one, and then after harvesting those planted more potatoes, they would not be ready for the egg festival. Of course, also during this time, I'd recommend planting your one green bean and at least one cauliflower to complete the spring crops bundle. Now, if you plant those strawberries with speed grow, you'll actually get a whole extra harvest before they die out in summer. To get speed grow this early, you'll want to make sure to complete the spring crops bundle for 20 freebies. And that should set you up for the whole season. Don't feel obligated to stick to this 100%. The most important part are those strawberries. Change everything else up if you like. You don't have to buy a new harvest of crops after you harvest the previous ones. Mix and match it a bit if you want. So, you know how you get the forageables of the season and turn them into seeds and then sell them for more money than they'd be worth as the raw forageables? Well, you can do that if you didn't know, but forget it now. Well, still turn them into seeds, but I have something else for you to do with them. Upon reaching two hearts with Caroline, you can enter the door in her kitchen to unlock tea saplings, which, yes, can be planted and harvested every day for the last week of a season, which will net you a total of 700 gold per plant if you turn them all into green tea with a keg. Or, instead of all that, you could just craft the tea sapling with two wild seeds, five wood, and five fiber, and then just sell it. It sells outright for a hefty 500 gold, no five-step procedure involved. If you're wondering about the profit compared to just selling the two seeds, two spring seeds will sell for a total of 70 gold. Even if you're really hurting for wood, you can just buy it outright from the carpenter's shop for 10 gold each. And let's be honest, fiber doesn't really have a lot of uses this early, so now every time you craft 10 seasonal seeds, you just earned 2,500 gold. Next, I cannot stress how important it is to set up your tree tappers early. You start out and you're like, oh, those are only needed for a few things, I'll wait on it. No, don't do that. These three items lock you out of some of the best money makers for both the early and late game. Maple syrup specifically can make bee houses, which are a very quick to set up machine that can net you an easy 380 gold every four days when it's next to a planted poppy. And that number only gets higher as the seasons go on and the flowers get more expensive. Even if you have to buy the iron ore for the bar in the recipe, the honey will pay for that in two harvests. It's an absolute must have here. I always sing its praises. It's so underrated. I watched someone else's 1.6 witch list and they said bee houses needed a buff and I shit my pants on the spot you all don't understand. Oh yeah, and oak resin makes kegs, I guess. I don't really mess around with these too much early game, but you'll definitely want to work on them for later. Fishing. Yeah, sorry, it's great. I will at least leave you with a few tips to get you going. The best place to fish for money in spring is the mountain lake, unless it's raining, and then the river is best due to there being catfish now, which sell for tons of money. If I'm completely honest though, until you get to higher fishing levels, I just stick with the mountains. That thing is really hard to catch with a small bar. Also, don't be super afraid to use the training rod if you think you need it. Yes, it only allows common fish to bite and it makes them all normal quality, but just being able to catch the fish faster can make you more money. Also, I know that earning money early is very valuable to you, but consider keeping any fish that sell for less than 75 gold, as later you'll get a recipe to cook any fish into sashimi, which itself sells for 75 gold. 
you'll get that recipe from Linus upon reaching three hearts with him. Now with this next method we may be sneaking into exploit territory, but I think the difficulty of learning makes up for it. We're gonna learn how to clay farm. To start, you're going to need the largest area possible of hoeable soil. For most people this will probably be the beach. Most of this method relies on knowing that you can use the pickaxe to unhoe the ground, where you can then hoe it again for a chance at another drop. So to start, we're going to hoe the same spot until we get a drop of clay. From here, we're going to follow a pattern. Go right two spaces, up one, hoe that spot. Continue until you have six spots hoed, and then move straight left from the last spot until you're above your starting point. Do that same pattern four times. Now you're going to repeat this whole pattern one spot above where you started. You should have what looks like 10 lines now. That's your full rotation. Your next starting point is going to be three spots to the right of where you initially started. You can now repeat this rotation as many times as you like. If there's an object blocking a spot that you need to hoe, simply hoe a different spot and it'll skip that spot and you can continue with your pattern. Same thing applies if you accidentally hoe the wrong spot, just simply skip whatever spot you were going for and continue. Now let's look at those profits. Clay is worth 20 gold, which may not seem like much, but let's look at a whole energy bar's worth of clay farming. This is your starting energy bar, no star drops, nothing. I was able to hoe up 110 clay, which sold for 2,200 gold, and it's not even noon of day one. That's a lot of money. If you really wanted to go all out with it, you could then buy like a few salads or something and continue clay farming. This is specifically really good with early game because the money doesn't really compare to what you get if you're farther down on your farm, but for day one, that's crazy starting money. Coming off the heels of that, I just want to give you a bunch of rapid fire smaller ways to make more incremental amounts of money. First, I'd unlock the tide pools on the beach as soon as you can because sea urchins and coral spawn there. Coral will sell for 80 gold at low quality and sea urchins will sell for 160 gold at low quality. That's just easy money. Once you unlock crystallariums, the way you're going to get the most money out of them is if you give them a diamond. At that point, they'll produce a diamond every five days, the diamond being worth 750 gold, so that's 150 gold per day. If you don't have a diamond to put in, if you use either an emerald, ruby, or jade, those will each produce 120 gold per day. Uh, and I suppose if you have a star shard, that gives you 144 gold per day, although that's very unlikely that you just have one sitting around. And also, as far as geodes go, if you're in it purely for money, you don't care about the minerals that you get from breaking them open at all. They sell for 50 gold each, which very slightly edges out the money you would get if you broke a lot of them open and then sold the contents. For frozen and magma geodes, it is only profitable to break them open if you have the gemologist profession. Otherwise, you'll earn more money just by selling them outright. For Omni Geodes, it is always worth it to break them open, period. To make a little bit of extra money with your crops, don't forget to plant those mixed seeds. Those will randomly grow into a few different crops depending on the season, but they're completely free, so there's no reason not to plant them unless you just really hate watering crops. I'd say the first backpack upgrade is worth it as soon as you can spare the money. The second can be held off. I usually wait until like late summer to get that. As far as tool upgrades go, I'd prioritize the pickaxe and the axe, because wooden ore are important to making more money further down the line. And if you don't love yourself, how in the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Thank you for watching and good night. <laughs>